Good morning, everybody. It's Javier, and I'm super excited to be with you here today to share with you some pretty exciting uh, information to help you position yourself for a successful and, most importantly, profitable 2022. Uh, just want to start by letting everybody know Red's not going to be on the call to do his portion of it, so it's going to be shorter. But the only thing I'm going to pass on to you are the questions we're, great, we're getting in regards to the rising interest rates. And the answer is that they are going up slightly already. And it's amazing how just the rumors of it affect the market. That's just the way it is. And it seems that the rumors are affected going up more than going down, kind of like gasoline. They have rumors of that, that you know, gas prices might rise and they rise in like 30 seconds. Um, but there's rumors that they're going to go down and they take forever to go down. And so that's the reality. Uh, I've been waiting for this to happen for a while. All of you have been following my train of thought. And I said that, you know, because we are in an artificially low interest rate market, uh, I don't like it a whole lot, to be honest with you. I like it when they're higher. I think the magic number for interest rates for me, at least, is around seven, seven and a half percent um, is what I like to see. And I think eventually over the coming years, we're going to get there and beyond. But I think for this coming year, uh, just now we're talking about a different rate, of course, that the Fed talks about versus mortgage rates, but they do mirror each other because there's so much uh, stuff that goes on as it relates to how it influences it, if you would. And so to make a long story longer, I personally think that, you know, Fed, uh, it will raise interest rate. They said they're going to raise them at least three times next year. And with all that's going on with inflation, as you've heard me say for a while, it's going to happen. And I think it's a good thing. I like to see a tougher rate market more than the market that we are in right now, especially as it relates to the continued automation, if you would, of so many things when it comes to lending, real estate as a whole, that for us, it actually helps us more when rates are higher than when they are lower as well. And you know, it doesn't take that much to just realize what I'm talking about because most of you can relate to higher rates than you can to lower rates. I mean, I don't know how old you guys are or how long you've been around in the game or in life, but I'm sure some of you remember personally having an interest rate on a mortgage higher than three and a half percent or four uh, percent. Just out of curiosity, who here wants to date themselves by telling us what kind of rate have you person? I think you heard of or that you gave somebody, but you on your home, what's the highest rate you've had on a mortgage yourself? I had eight when I bought my house. Eight. Perfect. Okay. Uh-huh. And then when I took out the second, my second was 12. There you go. Perfect. Eight. Anybody else? I have five and a quarter when I first bought the house. 20, uh, 2003. 2000. Okay. Okay, cool. Uh, anybody? I had, well, I had 11 and a half. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is that Is was that a, a credit re- card? Uh, being 1982. Wow. 11 and a half percent. Okay. Well, I think he's yeah. going to win that one. Yeah. And the cars were 19 percent. Jesus. Okay. Oh, my God. Well, okay. I think you just that was terrible. Big time. But okay. Well, thank you very much. And so the point that I'm making is don't be one of these people that are panicking. You know, the sky is falling because rates are going up. I want rates to go up. And part of the problem that we have, big problem, because see, I think we're going to be a positive thing because part of the reason the rates are so low and part of the reason, first of all, is because artificially low. It's not because of the market. It's because of the Fed, number one. Number two, the biggest problem we have with these prices being so high is that, unfortunately, what causes these payments or, or these prices to be so high is that we sell homes based on payment, not on price. And so, therefore, they just look at it, a $900,000 loan at 3%. Yeah, you can afford $2,800 type of thing. And that's not necessarily true. So I always say that I would much rather have a high interest rate. I'd rather have an 8.5%, which is the highest I've ever had. I would rather personally have an 8.5% interest rate on a $300,000 home than a 3% on a $900,000 home for the same home or the loan, I should say, for the same home. Because I can always prepay. I can always prepay the $300,000 a hell of a lot faster than I can a $900,000 home. You know how it amortizes. You know the bulk of the payment goes to interest in that principle. You know that. And I'm actually doing a class next week on how to prepay mortgages because that's a conversation you're going to have to, with people when you're talking about why rates are at 4 5 7% and higher. Let them know that it's actually a very good thing because, again, it's a lot easier to prepay down 300000 than it is to prepay down 900000 for the same home. And I'll hey, sure I have a question. Go ahead. Would, hey. would rates going up drive price down? Absolutely. And, and the beauty behind this is this. Understand that it's all a mathematical equation, all of it. 
And so the way it works is if you take it off, I'll give you an example. Marcella, hold on. Can you bring my phone? I'll show you an example. Now, I don't know what app you guys use, but I actually use what's called a Qualifier Plus app, which is, uh, I don't know if they came out in price. It used to be pretty expensive, but it doesn't really matter. The point, the, the point that I want to share with you is how it actually works. And, and so the reason this is a good thing is because when I'm having the conversation, thank you, baby. And when I'm having this conversation with my clients, uh, look at this right here. Uh, let me see if it pops up on the mirroring. It didn't do it last week. Let me see. Let me just go and see if this works. And I want you to follow because I think this is really important as it relates to the conversation because the way you're going to deal with rates in 2022 is different than you did it this year. And if you do it the same way this year, you're probably going to struggle. Well, that's just the reality of it. So let me just see if this pops up in just one second. Uh, it's not unable to connect. Let me see if I can do it this other way because I need you to actually see the screen. Hold on. Ooh, where did it go? Okay. Oh, here it is. So bear with me. I'm trying to see if I, oh, I'm not going to be able to collect it because it doesn't have, anyways, I was trying to show you this on screen, but I'm going to have to show it to you on a browser. So let me just show you this on a browser so you understand. And it takes a little bit of thinking here to understand what I'm getting at. Let me just show you this real quick. Uh, let's see. And so what I'm sharing with you, which you should be able to see here, um, let's see. I'm just using for a very, very basic one. So and it needs to be big so you can see it on the screen. So here, you can kind of see this on the right-hand side. And so let's just say I'm using, uh, I have a friend of mine who's a police officer, just bought a house here in Upland for $900,000. I thought, you're crazy. You must be crazy. Um, and so anyways, whatever. Uh, so let's just say we do it on a percentage basis. And I know the numbers are wrong. I know the maximum loan amount is wrong. I just want to show you the concept. That's all. So bear with me. So don't beat me up. Uh, so somebody puts 3.5% down for nine. Okay, it would be nice. 800,000. Hold on. And so 800,000. 800, so 3.5% down payment. That would give them a loan amount of seven, uh, seven, 72, 772. The mortgage payment is 1401 right here. And so I don't know why it's not required. But anyway, the point that I'm making is that if you come in here and I'm just showing you something a little crazy here. Let me show you right here. Five. five. Let me see. And more people are coming in late, late, late. Okay. So anyways, the point that I'm making is I want to see if this one shows it right. Hold on. Uh, that one. Because I've never used this one before. Let me just see. see. Nope. Yeah, this is just, okay, so here. So in this example, and I just want you to focus on the right-hand side, we sell homes and mortgages based on qualifications, primarily debt-to-income ratios or DTIs. That's what shoves it in there. So in this example, this person buys a home for 800000 They put 3.5% down. That's the loan amount. That really doesn't matter. We don't, we don't qualify people based on sales prices. We, we qualify them based on payment because that's what affects based on their income. And so as you can see here, 800,000, 3.5% down, 772, interest rate of 3%. Well, down here shows me that's 3538. 3538 is a, a 3859, I'm sorry, is the payment, which it could qualify. I mean, that's just the way it works. But if we take this, let's just say interest rate, let me go back over here and let's just say, like we were talking about, I like seven. Now, if we use 7% interest rate, the 3859, I guarantee you is not going to qualify it based on the, on the new one. So what I'm going to do, if somebody can remember, 3859 now becomes 57, if it's impossible. And so what can we mess with to bring this under 4,000? The only way this qualifies, the only way you can do that now is by coming in here and moving this to, let's just say, 600,000. Now, we're still at 43. We are, and so what, understand one thing. 
part of the reason, so this would actually have to be even less than that to qualify. So there you go. So we had to take it to 500,000. If you understand one thing, and the one thing that you need to internalize as an MLO is that financing is the tail that wags the real estate dog. Do you understand that? The realtor side, meaning the sales price, they have not only, I wouldn't say control over it, but they have no influence over it. They will sell it at 500,000, 800,000. It's whatever, because unless everybody's coming in with cash only, which the vast majority of the people don't do that, one of the things that screwed us up right now were the investors. Investors were coming out of wood woodwork. And that drove the market more. And even interest rates on not owner occupied, even on hard money loans was really good, is really good. And so as that changes, the only variable we can mess around with that the market does it for is, by the way, is the sales price. So if, if prices stay at eight, not, like I said, that friend of mine, 900,000 for a single family in Upland, I mean, I'm, a basic home. Now, if that stays at 900,000 and you throw a 7%, 6%, 5%, it will not work. And so that's called the crash. And what happens in the crash values, so I'm not saying we're crashing, by the way, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that prices are gonna trend down just for the simple fact that for a lot of investors, it won't make sense. A lot of hard money lenders, it won't make sense. A lot of people that are flipping, it just won't make sense. It just won't make sense because the way homes have been going up in value, it's not the norm and it's not healthy and we're paying the price for it right now. Not to mention the flip side to low interest rates. It's great if you're borrowing money, perfect if you're borrowing money, but it sucks if you're a saver. You know what it's like to be a retiree right now and you have a CD? Who can tell me what a CD is going for right now? Anybody know? Or any guesses? Um, I don't know, but I know in 81 or 82 when I was in the bank, we were paying 21%, 18 to 21%. Okay, call it that. We're living on the retirement. Sure, and, and, and that's, that's a perfect point. And so having said that, I want to see if I can put it up on the screen. I just literally went to Google. I'm not, I didn't do anything other than go to Google and typed in Chase, uh, just because it's a pretty good bank. Uh, and so that's, that's the way, you know, we, we, I'm in the financial services world, just so you know. And so what I always tell people or when I, or when I train people, one of the things I always mention is the fact that, you know, who puts the money in the CDs? And it's always the little old lady saying, that's the way we say it. Now, why do little old ladies put their money in the CD? Well, it has changed a little bit. Uh, let me see. One of the things that we talk about is, well, because number one, they want a free toaster. You know, they usually give them a free toaster, putting all their quarter million dollars retirement into a CD. But that's not the point. The point that I'm saying is that it's they wanted the safety of continuous income at, you know, 20%, 15%. Now, it doesn't go up maybe as fast as the rest of the market, but it's safe. And this is the chase. I'm, I'm just right here, CD page. Um, and so how to, how to open it up? Not a customer. Now, here it is. Here's what I want to do. So let's just say I give, you, give them my money for five years. Now, little old ladies don't usually do five years because they need part of it, okay? And depending on the type of actual uh, CD, we do something called uh, laddering, where we always have, we put them in multiple accounts so that every six months, one of them is paying the money out or making it available because they don't want to, they got to live off of it. So let's just say you go with 10 years. Oh, no, listen, let's just say five years, which is 60 months or four years right here. Now, the first column is how much money you're going to put in it. Zero to 10, 10 uh, to, to, to 25, 25 to 50. So let's just say the little old lady is going to do 50, which would be put her in the better end because at 50, that way, uh, she, she's going to scatter them over several CDs. She's got 200,000. That's it. That's the rest of her money for her rest of her life. 50,000. Here's the rate. So we're looking at for what we wanted to do for four years, 0.05%. 0.05%, which is unbelievable. And so you see how complicated this chart is. What the hell difference does it make? It's all 0.05%. Now, the little old lady earns her 0.05%. What, what does she have to still do with the 0.05%? Anybody? Taxes. And she has to pay taxes. taxes. Of course. So that might leave her with what? 
0.04? I mean, why even bother putting it in a CD and risk being caught with that cash when you need it the most? And so what I'm getting at, especially our seniors, our savers, they're getting killed because of this low interest rate thing we have going on, which further drives up the challenges that are before us right now. Does that make sense? So, so I hope you understand what I'm what I showed you about the hype, because something has to give. Either rates have to continue to drop, and they have been dropping for years. This, 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 which means prices can rise because they still qualify. But when rates start to go up, then the only thing that can give, the only variable uh, even able to, to change, are of course home prices, and that's for a lot of different reasons. Primarily because demand goes down. It's called the open market system. So it's not that I have a uh, you know crystal ball. It's just that fundamentals of finance in America. Any, any thoughts on that, questions? Anything at all before we move on? All right, if no one has anything to say, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and continue with this and you should be able to see it on your screen. Let me see why you're not. Uh, go up here real quick. All right, so here we go. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share the screen with you uh, and then make this available. Let me just pull it up before I show it to you. Let me make it available to you as well. People, let's see. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you a, a book or the chapter, I should say, to what I'm going to share with you here in just one second. So what I'm going to share with you is the actual chapter to what I'm going to read uh, uh, to you. I just want to make sure I'm in the right one. Okay, cool. So let me back up a little bit. Nobody's doing that. Okay. So what I want to do is just read this to you real quick, which is uh, John C. Maxwell's The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. This is the last time that we do this. Uh, the reason we're doing this, we can't get any participation from anybody. So I don't know if it's worth people's time or not. So I don't want to waste more of my time putting this stuff together. So this is going to be the last one that we do. Uh, we're at chapter eight, which is the law of intuition. Now, you as a realtor, as an MLO, as a leader, you have to develop and always work on this intuition that you already possess to a certain degree. And I'll show you what those three degrees of this law revolve around. And it explains why some people work with very good people all the time, good prospects, good potential clients, they always close, they're always making money. And then I see some of our people, they continue to bring the most horrible deals on earth to the table to see if we can close it because this person is a good person. This prospect's a good person, they just need a break. That's not how financing works. Either they qualify or they don't. And the problem really isn't the prospect, it's how we have our mindset set up. And so you have to develop this because this will be your intuition as a leader. And it says here, Leaders evaluate everything with a leadership bias. I have a huge, huge leadership bias myself. There are things that I do to, I bend over backwards for people that my intuition tells me are gonna be doing very good with us. That's just the way I do it. I take the calls, I move them, I give them tools, I do everything. And then there are others that until they do something, I'm not gonna lift a finger because something tells me that this is probably gonna end up the way it ended when they were working for the other bank and the bank before that and the bank before that and the bank before that. And sure enough, we can't find them. They can't complete their required continuing education. And we just have no choice but to deactivate them. Wonder what the hell ever happened to them. And after 20 something years of doing this, uh, I'm telling you right now, I found this to be very, very true. And why is that? Well, here's what I want to show you. There are three levels of leadership intuition. If you're saying to yourself, I'd like to be able to read these dynamics in my organization, but I just don't see things intuitively, don't despair. The good news is that you can improve your leadership intuition even if you are not a natural born leader. And here they are. Number one, those who naturally understand leadership. It just comes second nature to them for whatever reason, based on the training, education, life experience, business experience, they just do it. And then you have number two, those who can be nurtured to understand leadership. That's what I try to do, nurture you, which is why I'm here on Saturday mornings, not for my ego's sake, I got better stuff to do. I was at Knott's yesterday with my grandkids, my wife. I'd rather go back to Knott's. I have yearly passes. I can go back right now and go there again. But I also prioritize knowing that I have to work on my people and help them help themselves to make sure that we are stronger as an organization to continue the success into 2022 we've experienced in 2021 and beyond. So again, number one, those who naturally understand leadership. Then you have those number two, could be nurtured to understand leadership. And then you have number three, 
those who will never get this whole leadership thing. And those are the ones you better watch out for. They will take your time like it's nothing. They will take your energy. They will take everything from you. But they really have no sincere interest uh, in developing themselves to the point that they become self-sufficient. And they are the type that will, you know, latch on to you all the time. And the day you say, hey, look, you got to start doing stuff on your own, they disappear. And so I've gotten really, really good at that. And, and this is the, the leadership intuition is just an extension of your regular intuition. All of you have that already, life intuition. Does that make sense or no? I mean, I can tell you right now that I talk to people that are interested in a refi. Perfect. Let's go ahead and start by taking a look at your current mortgage statement. Let's see where you're at. Let's see if you have, I, I, and of course, I just simply, you know, uh, uh, give them info just because I just want to talk. So I say, hey, let's take a look at it and see if you have any prepayment penalties. See, well, of course, they don't. Uh, let's see. Let's just see where you're at right now. Uh, and based on how quickly, if ever, they get me their statement, determines what I do with them. And if the next day they haven't got me their mortgage statement, a week later they haven't got me the mortgage, it really won't go beyond a week because I just simply want to return their calls or I just won't deal with them because I know how that ends. They are the ones that will not be able to find their taxes. They will never be able to find their insurance. They will never be able to find uh, the note on their home. And so what I'm saying is that that will help you become more efficient because more, more, more people leave this business leave of, out of frustration than anything else. And I always say, well, that's kind of on you because you never should have allowed others to frustrate you to the point that you quit. And so you have to understand who you're dealing with. So we all have that intuition already to a certain degree, not just in leadership, but in life. You know, when I was a police officer, I sometimes tell the story that when I was a police officer, the only time that I remember, and I was there for 10 years patrol, for those 10 years, the only time, the one time that I went against my intuition as a cop, I was working by myself. I was in the middle of a, a alleyway and everything in my, every fiber in my body told me, this guy's an ass, this guy's an ass. And, and so, and I fell for it. I was acting nice, speaking real nice. And I was like, you know, and before you know it, I get out of my car and everything in my body kept telling me, don't do it, you call for help, don't do it. But like, I was really cool. I mean, I'm so respectful and everything in my body kept telling me, don't do it, idiot, don't do it. And before you know it, I'm in a fight for my life in the middle of an alley with nobody around that knowing that he goes or I go, uh, and it ain't going to be me. And so I couldn't forgive myself for weeks and weeks after the incident went down because I went against my intuition and I knew it and I knew it. I knew it. And I still to this day get so upset when I think about it. Because I knew it, not because of something obvious, but just my intuition, just my intuition. And I went against it. Uh, you know, I remember another time, real clearly, I went, uh, there was a burglary. Somebody had broken into somebody's house. It was a nice part of town, a beautiful home. They had a guest home in the back. Somebody broke in the night before. They called the police around 10 at night. So the guys are gone. They just need a report for their insurance. I'm working the day shift. I walk in. Uh, to the police station. They're like, hey, can you handle this call from last night? I got too busy. Nobody was able to handle it. They might be upset because you know somebody broke in. They don't know what time, but they noticed it around 10 at night. And they just need a report for their insurance. Simple. Just go take a report. That's all you got to do. All right, cool. Simple enough. Uh, I remember on our way there, we stopped by, got a cup of coffee because uh, it was you know on the other side of our division. I was working with a partner. And it was already daytime, like around 7 30, 8 30 in the morning. And as soon as I pull up in front of the house, the owner comes out, oh, hey guys, thank you. I know you guys are busy, but I just really need this report for my uh, insurance company. And I go, Well, we, first we got to check out the house, make sure nobody's in there. No, no, no. We already checked it out. Nobody's there. I just need to report. All right. Well, we need to see what was taken. Okay. So I don't know why I started to walk towards the house with my partner. And again, boom, that intuition kicked in. I don't know why, but my intuition said, Dude, you know, something's up. So I went back to my police car and I got my flashlight, which back then we carried those big metal pipe looking things. And so I got the, my big flashlight and my partner looked at me. He's like, why are you, why are you getting a flashlight? It's daytime. And all I told him was, I don't know. Somebody just told me to grab it. No big deal. I'll put it in my back sat pocket. And I went into the, uh, to the house because we were just going to, you know, look around what they took. That was it. And I'll never forget. Uh, we walked in. And I told the owner, just stay here while we make sure nobody's in there. He goes, no, we already checked it out. 
nobody there. I go, I know, just do me a favor, just stay out here. And sure enough, we go inside and my partner, you know, we start walking through the back house and one of the doors was close to the, uh, of one of the bedrooms and the owner is yelling at us. I already checked, there's nobody in there. My partner's like, I know, I go, but we, we got to check. So my partner, you know, just took out his gun, basically just kind of to have it on standby, you know, open the door. And all I saw was somebody reach and take and grab my partner's gun. And before you know it, the guy has my damn partner's gun. I'm trying to shoot him. I can't shoot him because my partner's rolling around the ground with him on his back. And they're going literally in circles all over the damn thing. And I'm aiming. I can't, I can't, I can't shoot. So finally, I decide, let me put my gun away and I need to jump on this guy. This guy was so big. He was probably 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, um, and, you know, at the time, I probably weighed, you know, 225, 230 pounds. My partner probably weighed 200 pounds. I knew we were in trouble when my partner was on this guy's back. I jumped on top of my partner to two guys, big guys on top of this guy. And this guy starts to do a push up to get up, and he's pushing both of us up on his back. And I said, it's over. We're, I mean, this guy, and I knew something was up. And so to make a long story longer, I couldn't get to my gun because it was on my right hand side. I was trying to grab his neck on the left hand side as he's trying to choke my partner. And all I could reach for that I had was my flashlight. And I grabbed it and I whacked him. And I'll just remember a bloodbath because, you know, you don't really want to hit anybody in the head. Obviously, not a good thing, but it's also a lot of very bloody. And so I whacked him once, twice, nothing. This guy literally was. And finally, finally, after the whole poor home was all messed up, uh, he ended up giving up, took him to the hospital. And he's, you know, and turns out he was on special K and on meth. Uh, he was coked up and had been up all night doing nothing but drugs. And just wanted to fight. And he told us his goal was to kill us. And he's the only guy I had ever gone to court with, ever, 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 ever gone to court with. Bad guy that uh, we were in court. His head was all bandaged up. And he looked at us. He told the judge, judges, I just want to say one thing. And just like, what? He was I just want to apologize to the officers that I was so high. Something told me to kill him. And thankfully, I didn't. And they, but thankfully, they didn't kill me. And I said, well, the only reason I didn't kill you because I'm going to get to my gun because you would have been dead. But the point that I'm saying, I hope it's not a bad example to share with you, but intuition can save your life. And so why did I get a flashlight that day in the daytime? I had never carried a flashlight in the daytime. Um, intuition. And the same thing when it comes to business, the same thing when it comes to what I'm describing to you here today, that I've learned to do that. I will go out of my way like you wouldn't believe when I don't even know you just because something tells me you're going to do good. And again, sometimes people, uh, some things tell me they're not. And so you need to work on that. I'm going to give you a copy of this book if you want it. This is the last time we do this because I'm not going to be doing this. It takes too much time, to be honest with you. Um, but if you can do me a favor, check your chat. Can you let me know if you can open up the PDF file I just sent you? Anybody, let me know when you get it. If it opens up, I want to make sure it works. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, yes. there you go. Okay, cool. And so, like I said, for 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 my sake, I've learned. Now, has anybody here developed your intuition with clients? Okay, so can anybody know when somebody's jerking your chain or anything like that? Anybody? What sets off alarms for you when you work with a potential client, whether it be real estate, mortgages, anybody? When they you don't know. want to get a credit check. Oh, that's a beautiful one. Oh, thank you. Who said that? That was. That was me. Was that? Oh, Raymond. Okay. I mean, part of what we tell people, of course, on that side of the house is, well, before we, for now, this is as a realtor or as a loan officer, but before anything else, we want to make sure that you're in a position to qualify and to find out how much you can afford. And step one is to go ahead and run your credit, which we will do for free, by the way. And once they say, well, and this and that, you know how many people bring people to the table that they haven't run their credit? So they just want us to talk to them. I'm like, dude, if you can't talk to him and get him to run his credit, I'm not going to be able to do it. But that's a great one. Anybody else? How much they have in their bank account. Mm -hmm. Right. Or how much their income is. Right. Verified income, verified assets, mm -hmm. bank statements, that kind of a thing. Because if somebody does the old, 
well, it's under the mattress, you know, well, yeah, that's not going to work. What else? That's good. That's good stuff. Anybody else? When they're giving you a long story that doesn't make any sense. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. And, and thank you. Anybody, please. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is for everybody's benefit. I really thank you for sharing that because I think everything is so valid right now that I wouldn't have thought of saying that, but thank you. Anybody else? Last when, when the things that they're telling you don't, don't pan out, like I've been working for X amount of years, making X amount of money, you find out that that's not even close to what they said. Got it. Got it. Okay, cool. And, and that ties directly into your intuition where it eats away at the credibility is what I'm saying. And if it eats away at the credibility, they're probably not going to tell you the truth about the money or where it's coming from or everything else. And I think that's a hard thing to do for anybody in sales, especially real estate or mortgages, where you, you want to close every deal, you want to work with everybody, but sometimes the facts dictate otherwise, right? And you have to go with your gut and say, look, this person's just, you know, blown. if I come across somebody like that and I don't want to work with them, I'll go to somebody else and say, hey, are you interested in the split? 65, 35, you get 65, I just want 35 because I, I don't, I'm not getting a good feeling for this person. And let them know up front what it is uh, that you feel, but other people might be able to work with them. I just don't like to waste my time. I think one thing that I will tell you as I turn 50, January 1st is my birthday. Uh, my patience, you know, for, you know, nonsense, it's gone, you know? And so that's one thing I do. I just split everything with everybody for that reason. Um, but like I said, the, la the three, and I just continue here, uh, those who naturally, the three levels of, uh, of that development, if you would, of the intuition, those who naturally understand leadership, those who can be nurtured to understand leadership, and those who will never understand it. And so if you're trying to build a team, some of you are building your real estate offices, your loan officers uh, team, don't forget this. Don't forget this. People will waste your time like it's nothing. And it's amazing how people like to spend other people's money and waste other people's time. And so for me, I won't let people do that because it's you that has to set the pace for that as well. Any thoughts on the questions on this before I wrap it up, this part? Anything? All right, let's go ahead and move on. Uh, all I want to do is share with you today a special gift, which is called Ninja Leads. This is something that will help you. Uh, people have already asked me, how is this comparable to NowSight? Listen, NowSight is the Cadillac. Um, you know, what I'm sharing with you is just as a gift, it's worth literally a, a ton of money. It can help you generate leads, but it's no now site. If you have now site, please use now site. Uh, it allows you to do a hell of a lot more than this. But for those of you that don't know now site, this will help you get yourself uh, going with leads as well. And so what I'm going to give you an example of as it relates to this particular coming year for 2022 as a loan officer. And also, not just as a loan officer, as a realtor, et cetera, you have to understand that leads or prospects is where it's at. How much money you make has a lot to do with how many deals you close and how many deals you close are tied in into how many leads you have. Who's your audience? That's the number one thing that people fail to appreciate the most. And that is, of course, how do you go about creating an audience? Well, you can buy a list of realtors, you can buy access to through the board, or in this example, you can just get in the habit of setting up what are called microsites. Microsites are very baby, baby landing pages, like the one you see on the screen that allows you to create man magnet pages that convert, export leads, insert advertisements, and sell stuff if you wanted to. So let's agree on one thing. Leads are the foundation of any business. You need leads to succeed. And that's where this platform comes in. So I'm going to get into it because this is the training, by the way, on how to use it, as well as what it's all about. I'm going to give you access to this uh, for the entire, for it's a lifetime access. Uh, there's no monthly fee. It's intended to be resold. I have a reseller's license is what I have. And I'm going to show you how I have helped people set it up. All this stuff here is very simple to use. I'm going to show you how to make one right now. I put together this microsite here that you see on the screen which is a free first-time home buyer's guide. Uh, then it simply says free, free, uh, free first-time home, forget the about, that's wrong. Free first-time home buyer guide. This guide will walk you through the most important steps when it comes to buying a home, including determining how much home you can afford, shopping for a mortgage, how to find your ideal home, and much more. Click to get your hands on this free guide and start your journey towards home ownership today. Very simple, very simple. So if you want to set up one, two, or 10 of these, you can, because this comes with unlimited 
uh, land or uh, micro pages. Don't confuse it with NowSite because NowSite is much stronger. It allows you to do videos, audio, all kinds of cool stuff. This is simple, simple stuff. Also, it comes with a free uh, certificate, SSL certificate, meaning that the uh, web address starts with an actual HTTPS, which is a mandatory for Google ranked websites and so on. It's really intended for social media sent to your, uh, your clients. So if you want to organize a database, now this does not replace NowSite. NowSite is the king. Uh, this does not replace your CRM. This is just one more thing you're going to use to get yourself from where you are to where you want to be, especially in 2022. One more tool doesn't mean you stop doing everything else. It just simply means that all you're going to do is leverage this as well. So let's get into it so you can understand what I'm talking about. I'm going to send, uh, make available the form on the screen to you right now where you're going to request an account and it's free and it's a lifetime account on top of that. All I'm going to need is your name, email address, and cell phone number. And your login info will be your email address as your username. And the password will be success in 2022, all in lowercase. Remember that success in 2022, all in lowercase. And I'll get you the form to see what I'm going to show you here on the screen right now. So let's get into it. And I'll show you how simple and powerful this is. So let me just go ahead and open this up. One second, please. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my account. And you will have an account. Now, let me, I know you can't see it, so I'm just uh, show it to you right now. Okay, so I, I just did a webinar about an hour ago, and this is how many people responded to it already. These are called your leads. I'm in the first page. I only have one page. Okay, that's cool. So I'll show you how that looks. So it all starts with you setting up your store. When you come in here, you're going to go to my settings. When you go to my settings, well, first of all, log in using your email address and success in 2022. You're going to log in. And when you go to my settings, it's going to allow you, I already did it, but it's going to ask you to change your store URL. You need to name it something. So if Michael is here, you can call it just Michael. And then the rest is automatic. Access123.net. Uh, Vanessa.access123.net. What a realtor, MLO, dot, what? so one name for everything you're going to do. So it doesn't matter. As long as nobody has taken that already, that will be your store's domain. So you have to do that. Name it. Then you're going to need your store title. Call it whatever you want to. Marketing made simple. Loans for you. MLO info, whatever. Your store help URL. I just typed in Google just for the simple fact that it doesn't matter. Nobody comes for help. So just whatever. Your name and PayPal address in case you're going to collect payments, even though I don't collect it, but just do that. Select the password, which I'm going to issue to you, and you're good to go. Then you're going to go to the products tab, which is on the left-hand side. And here's where you're going to find what I have. And so in this example, uh, these are your products where you work on your products. However, where you're going to actually see your store, if you would, is going to be based on your link that you selected earlier. And I'll show you that here in just one second. So let me go ahead and go here. And this is how you get. I got the dashboard. And this is your store address. The Michael dot, whatever you name it, this is what it's going to be. So I'm going to click on mine. And these are the, these are live. Some of these come with your package already. But the one that I created is this one for first-time home buyers. So what I do here, I simply click on it. And this is it. This is the web address for it at the top that I can use, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna type in, let's just say Facebook, I'm gonna market this particular lead or a generator. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna type in the URL, which is what I just copied. A preview will load up as you can see, but then you highlight the actual web address. So it looks ugly, it looks nicer like this. And then you're gonna simply Type in something short, so looking a home, this free guy can, can save you time and something catchy, something simple. And there it is. 
Now, when somebody clicks on this, it's going to take them to the landing page you saw earlier. And that's how simple it is. They're going to input their information. They're going to do whatever the case they want to make. Uh, as a matter of fact, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and in the chat mode, now let me go back to my account. Let me see if I can pull it up here. I had 23 leads, two, three. Now, what's really nice about this, if you go and you visit my actual page, the way that I advertise this was based on this. Let me show you real quick. This, first time home buyer. So you, you might be wondering, well, what are you going to give them? Well, A, if you have your own guide, you can use it here. I don't like to reinvent the wheel. I just Google anything that I want to market, and somebody already wrote it, I guarantee you. Uh, so I'll, I'll give you an example. I can type in home. Let me see. Home buyer's guide PDF is what I'm typing because I'm gonna need something to give them. So if you go down here, there's all kinds of banks and companies putting in all kinds of stuff that you can use for free. So my example, I just went with this law firm, some company, because I'm not gonna change it. So I'm not any, there's no copyright infringements. I'm, I'm not changing anything. I just simply like this one. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna download it onto my computer. So that's what I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave all the, I don't care if it has somebody's phone number, I don't care if it has uh, sent you 21 or whatever. I don't care because that's not what I'm in it. I'm in it to get their email. Their email comes first and then they get whatever you're going to give them. So I'm not going to waste time, if you would. So you can even use their download link, which is this one right here, to do that. So what you're going to need to put together is an image, which is what pops up in social media or the website, and something to give them. So this is what I'm going to use to give them. I'm going to use this PDF, fine. Then... I, now I need an image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and type in, let's just say something like, uh, um, let's just say first time home buyer. But I'm going to click on images. You notice here, I'm going to click on images. And I'm going to look for something that looks pretty nice. This one looks pretty cool. What, when, how, why? Maybe it doesn't look like dumb. Um, let's see. I like this one. This has a couple, or it could be this one. I, I mean, it doesn't matter. What does it say? I can't even read the damn thing. Uh, uh, my eyes are horrible. Um, our first one. So, okay. Uh, I mean, I, I, I like it square. So it's this one right here. So I'm going to right-click it, save image as, and I'm going to call it to make it easy what it says. Our first home image, just so I know that it's the image. I'm going to save it wherever, Dropbox. Great. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to my account, my dashboard. I'm going to go to products. I'm going to click add product. And there you go. So it starts with your image. Now, remember, don't call me during the week after this webinar. Don't call me asking for help. You can view the recording of the webinar all you want, but don't call me. There's no support being offered on this. If you have now side, call me for now side, but don't call me for this. Uh, so again, I'm looking for the image. Was it our new home? What the hell was it? Our home? I think it was home image. Let me see. Isn't that what I called it? No. Yeah, our first one. That's what it was. Our first one. So I'm going to hit that. I'm going to set the image title. Um, free. First. Time, home, buyers. Now, uh, people always argue with me. One word or two words, home buyers. Anybody? Yeah, somebody had to go to college. I didn't go to college. How about a hyphen? Okay, that's what I usually do. Put the hyphen. There you go. So there you go. First time home buyers guy. Is that cool? All right. Price because you can sell stuff. I don't sell anything. Zero zero zero. Here. Then you just type in something short and sweet, looking to buy your first home. This guide will help you. And then just simply put use bullet points. Know how much you can afford. Avoid 
pitfalls. Hit the most bank for your buck. Always end it with and more. Click to click uh, today and move into. there now product access it's going to be where they're going to be sent the file from so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go in here was it this no it was here so i'm going to copy the url from these people so i'm just going to use their stuff i don't need to recreate or reinvent the wheel so i'm just going to come in here and there you go law firm um uh, and that's it at the product now, what you want to do, of course, is you know this better than me, the DRE number, all that other stuff. Put it below that and your phone number or something like that uh, to be compliant with your appropriate you know, department. But that's it. That's all you need to do. So if I go back to my uh, products, I'm sorry, if I go back to my store, which is the dashboard, then I click on my store. There it is. There it is. And look how nice that's going to look. When I click on it, it's going to be here. This is the actual address at the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and if somebody here can humor me. I'm going to go ahead and let me just see where the hell it went. Uh, okay, here it is. Sorry. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and put this in the chat. And can somebody click on it and just put some bogus info, uh, you know, just bogus name. And so I just want to monitor it basically here. And so... Uh, let me see how many I have. We, I'm going to go back to my leads, which is right here. And I'm already at the second page. And so I'm hit number two. So there you go. Anthony. Uh, and so you want to always check it before you, uh, because sometimes the download link, uh, I, I put access link that was supposed to go download. So to make sure it works is what I'm getting at. That's all you really need to do. And then the dashboard, like I said, we were at 22, I think we're at 25. So, so it's working. People are coming in here and you can just come here. And when you need to market to new people, just go ahead and download the leads right here. And you'll also know that these were for my first time home buyers. These were for my retirement to tax free. And I can just export them into Excel from here and use whichever ones I need. Does that make sense? Anybody? Anybody? Yeah. yeah, man, I love it. Makes okay, sense. I'm just saying it's really, really simple. And also the reason that I say this, the two things you're going to need is you need a URL to what you're going to give people, number one, and you're going to need an image. So who can tell me how you could put this to work in on the mortgage or even real estate industry? So we just talked about a free home, uh, free first, first time home buyers guide. Great. What else? You can probably do refis, do like a, a mortgage. Like a mortgage one. Absolutely. Uh, rates are on the rise type of thing, right? Lock it in before the ship leaves port. Absolutely. What else? Listings. Listings. Absolutely. I mean, you want to leverage this for listings? Come on. I need you to use your old noodle. Come on. Uh, anybody else? Come on. Because I'm not going to help you beyond this. Uh, investment properties. Investment properties. I'm talking. Okay, perfect. Anything else? Cash out for projects. Okay, cash out. Anybody? How about can you announce? Can you announce uh, rising interest rates to this? Yeah, I mean anything. You can put anything you want on. And remember, what's nice about this, we're talking about like right now. The hot thing to talk to everybody about is that rates are on the rise. Don't be the one that says no, no. Don't believe the hype. Don't believe the media. Don't be that person. You will succeed more as a anything loan officer, realtor. When you go with the flow, absolutely. So if you even suspect rates might be rising, now is the time to see, because remember, we're going to lose about 30 to 40% of our business that are 30, for, 30 to 40% of our business right now comes from people who refi within the last 12 months. You understand that? I mean, do you realize that? Yes. We're re I mean, so that's going to be gone. So if you're doing good and you're losing 30 to 40% of your business, you might not be doing as good. If you're struggling now, well, 30 to 40% of the market just went away. Hell, you're really going to struggle now. 
And so the point that I'm making is that you have to think as a marketer. Uh, Wayne Gretzky, you know, they, I mean, it's pretty cool when they call you the greatest. One of the things when they ask him, what makes you the greatest? Anybody know what he said? What is he? What did he do different that made him the greatest versus most other hockey players? He saw where the puck was going instead of where he was. went where he thought yeah. the puck was going while everybody else went to where it was at. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So I'm telling you where the puck is going, and that's where you'll find me. And you can go where it's at right now. Good luck in 2022, because we still have to deal with the whole. You heard what I said earlier, uh, months, a month ago. Omicron is no joke. So you better navigate the waters in this pandemic, because this, this is the new normal, just so you know. This is it. And so therefore, again, we're just continuing to do good. But if you're struggling, you're really going to be struggling because you're going to have to uh, fight a double whammy here with a pandemic on one side and rising rates. I love it. I love it. I, I was a police officer when a gentleman sold me a couple of my homes. And he always said, man, I hate it when the market is doing so well. He goes, I love it because when the market is doing bad, only the real realtors are around. Is what he said. And that was true. Right now, everybody and their mother came out of the woodwork to get their MLS license, to get their real estate license all over again. One in 13 Californians has a damn real estate license. I'd hate to be a realtor trying to figure it out right now. I'll tell you that right now. Because if, you know, anyways, so you got to be innovative. Uh, so I'm waiting to hear something like, how about a, just a little micro? These are micro sizes, they're not websites. They're baby, baby sizes. How long did it take me to make to create that one? Five minutes. Five, five I mean, minutes, yeah. I mean, so do you think maybe you should have one for, let's just say, FHA? Yes. Yes. How about oh. VA? How about a baby mm -hmm. VA? I mean, so what I'm saying is that, again, I don't know how you live your life, but the reason I keep telling people, don't call me, don't bug me, whatever, is because I like to focus on things, compartmentalize my life, my marketing, my business, everything. Uh, and so I'll give you an example. VA, what I would do, and this is what I do for fun. Uh, uh, so I'll go VA mortgage, an example. I just look up images. And so I look for something that cool, like right here, five benefits of a VA loan. Well, I could literally come in here, save the image as five benefits, VA loan, just so I know image. So I know what it is because I have a billion things on my Dropbox. Save that. Now, if I really want to know what these guys are talking about, I can click on it. Okay, this is not necessarily a, uh, this is more of a, you know, website, but you can type in here, VA benefits, and always at PDF when it comes to free reports. I'm not going to write a damn thing. Uh, I'll tell you that right now. I'm just going to steal it. And so here, uh, benefits and service, summary of PA benefits, whatever, whatever it is. Here. This is from the government themselves. This is and so what I'm saying is that here, I don't need to download it and put it into my own Dropbox. I can use their link. So I know I said five things. I'm not, I'm not saying that. But here, just to kind of understand and keep things in perspective here, I'm not going to use that. This one, I'm going to use uh, this one. I think is from a company, Mortgage One. I don't want to go that far. I'll just use it. Okay. So I can come here and save image as. VA, I just like to get rid of the dashes between their hyphens, whatever you want to call them. VA mortgage loans. And again, just so I know what I called it, image. So let's see how long it takes me to create this one. It's going to take me more time finding the damn things. Okay, so I'm going to come in here and don't start the timer yet. Okay, so let me just go back to my dashboard. Where the hell did it go? Okay, here. So let's just go. I'll go to products. All right, and let me just start the time. What the hell? Let me just see here. And so there, it's going. So I'm going to add a product right here. I'm going to add the image, VA. I forgot what I called it, but VA image. Let me see. I forgot what I called it. Um, okay, well, no. Anybody remember what I called the damn thing? Let me just go here. Five advantages. 
Advantages? Is that what it was? That benefits. Five yeah. benefits of the animals. Okay. Five. So as you can see, it totally going to take longer than that. Benefits. Image. Let's see. Are you sure? I think it was something else. Um, I think it started with five, right? Five benefits? No, no, but the, the image was different. The other image was different. Let's, okay, you guys are fired. That's my. Let's see. Hold on. All right, it was VA. VA loans. Is that what it was? I don't remember. Let's try it. Okay. Okay, we just try VA image. It was just image. Hold on. And so what I do, just so you know, we have a Morris logo, we have Morris. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, let me just cancel this. And what I usually do is I always put it on my on my desktop because my Dropbox is so so VA mortgage loan. That's what it was called. Huh? So I'm gonna save image as and so I'm just gonna call it VA mortgage loans, and I'm gonna call this image so that way it pops up. And I'm gonna put it just in the, usually I put everything on the Dropbox on my desktop and then I delete it. So here's what I'm going to do. All right, so I'm going to stop this at two minutes. I'm going to reset it, and I'm going to go ahead and start it right now. So I'm going to go back over here, and I'm going to go back to my dashboard. Here it is. So I'll just see. VA, what was it again? Shit. Oh, desktop. It's going to be. VA mortgage loans. Thank you. Okay. VA mortgage loans. There, so there it is. I have my image title, veterans. Uh, yeah. Mortgage, zero veterans. Up you. Free guy. Okay, so I always want to let them know that it's a guy. So here, the title veteran, uh, let's see. How to, because you got to mention the guy. Whatever. So there you go. Access URL. I'm going to go back. I think we were said we were, didn't we have another one we're going to use? Oh, here it is. So I'm going to use the government one. That's cool. And so I'm simply going to come in here. And I'm just going to. There, add product, and you're done. And there it is. Now, I don't see the image, so I want to make sure that, again, when I go to my dashboard, there, and this one had no image. I don't know why I didn't have an image, so let me just go ahead and go back over here. But that took two minutes and 16, so call it two minutes. And so I can come in here, edit it again. Yeah. Image, I think it was called. And so again, I'm just going to go into my desktop, which is where I had it. Do, 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 do. Let's see. No, where the hell went? Uh, whatever. Uh, I don't know. It was desktop, right? Let me see. Hold on. And so I'm just going to. And again, I just want you to see in real time, kind of what I'm what I'm doing and you know, any challenges because you just got to find it. Where the hell did I leave the file? So I'm just going to go back in here again, see if image as the image. I'm going to keep it simple, desktop. And so I'm going to go back over here, desktop, VA image there. There, it's in there. 
still not popping up. So again, very simple. I'm just going to go in here for whatever reason. Save image as. We launch image desktop. I'm just going to go ahead and edit this one again. Let's try it one more time. I can see it here. So we'll do this. There it is, and there it is. And so now I go to my dashboard, my store. There it is. If I click on it, there it is. If I come into, let's just say, uh, Facebook, I can, and I'm just using, you can use it with any of them, of course, but I'm just saying Facebook, I come in here. Better preload the image, the preview. There it is. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this, get rid of it. Said, Veterans, let me help you, blah, blah, blah. Free guide below. And that's it. Very, very simple. Whopping. This one took four minutes and 30 seconds. That's because I screwed it up uh, as well as that. Um, any questions from anybody about anything? Oh, uh, did, I, did I set the format or not? Uh, maybe not. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you the link. Uh, you need to do it in the next hour because the form will be uh, deactivated. Uh, let's see. So as you can see here, it shows the form being active. It's going to be deactivated in one hour. And again, if you're watching the recording of this, you're just late. It's just that simple. Not, not the end of the world. You can Google it and buy it, uh, I guess. But not in the business of you know, providing software for free to everybody all the time. So uh, the recording will be up and running. And... I just sent you the Google form. If you can't do it for whatever reason, just you're out. You're, you're, it's no big, no, no big deal. Uh, I will show you one last thing because people were asking me about this and I just ignored them as well. That is that we do not, I'm not e emailing everybody like before every Saturday after the webinar, everybody got an email, click here to view the recording of the actual webinar. I'm not doing that anymore. Uh, that's automated now. You need to click on the link I just sent you right now, which takes you to our YouTube channel. And when it takes you to our YouTube channel, all you simply need to do is click on the subscribe button like you see here on the screen right now. You click on that subscribe button and then you click on the bell, just like I did, and then you hit all. And that lets you know when new uh, videos are uploaded to the channel. You saw how simple that was. Very, very simple. And so that's all you need to do. So no more emails regarding the recordings being available. I mean, we're all grown men and women. We can do that on our own and not have to, you know, one last thing I have to do uh, as well. Uh, all right, last question for comments, concerns, anything at all before we wrap it up? I want to make sure we give you a chance to, uh, any thoughts, anybody, anything at all? Uh, I did get some questions from people regarding the uh, solar. It's going very well. It's actually ahead of schedule. So if you, for whatever reason, didn't attend any of our, um, if you didn't attend any of our one-on-one -on -one webinars and you're interested in considering coming on board, text me and I will schedule one with you and give you a personal one that I'm only doing until the end of the year. Because again, we are ahead of schedule uh, in regards to production. The number of t uh, people on the team, we're at 19. Right now we're looking for number 20. Um, and so we are going to meet this coming Wednesday for those that are in the webinar uh participating on the webinar if you if you would new badges are out a lot of stuff to pass on to you there's also new restrictions on january 1st as to what you need to do to get your hands on any of this stuff because we're not equipping people for the purpose of equipping people uh, we want to make sure we are with the ones that are number one or number two on that chart that i showed you earlier or in that book um and i'll tell you all about it but i'm telling you if you're a realtor right now man it's not only a no-brainer, but I think it's almost mandatory that you have to bring added value to your clients and prospects to remain, for the lack of a better phrase, uh, relevant in this world, ever-changing and evolving world. And so again, text me, and I will be more than happy to conduct a private webinar just one-on-one -on -one with you to show you in probably 10 minutes what this is all about. Uh, it's going to come to a theater near you anyways, so why not work on it as well? Uh, questions, comments, concerns? We're not meeting next Saturday, uh, by the we're way. Here. We're not meeting for the next two Saturdays, right? Correct. We're not going to be meeting for the next two Saturdays. This is our last meeting of the year, basically. And so 
I'm revving up and we're all revving up for an incredible 2022. And I hope you're part of that journey. I really want you to be part of that journey and be part of the people that are you know, funding their five, six, seven loans every single month like clockwork. And that's why we're here. That's what we do. And that's what we pay for the, uh, uh, you know, NMLS license, the renewals and everything else. If you haven't done your renewal, man, you're pushing it. I'm telling you right now, get it done. Um, uh, at this point, somebody contacted me this week about what to do. It's simple. Do it. I mean, this is, I, we have no control, of course, over the NMLS. And so if, if you're not, and a lot of people, by the way, are just having thoughts, should I renew my license? Is it worth keeping? And the answer is, I don't know. Maybe it's not. You know better than I do. I mean, if you're not going to get yourself to do the things that you have to do, um, then maybe, no, maybe not. Brett was just telling me, what are we going to do with the, uh, we have uh, a group of people who just have not even participating. And I, and I told them, suspend the, uh, I don't know what's so hard, right? You just suspend the sponsorship. Very simple. It's not that hard. I don't understand why some things have to be made difficult. They're not responding. They're not around. They're not on the webinar. They're not submitting business. Yet we're still paying for the sponsorship fees that we have to pay for, the uh, email, uh, credentials. Uh, everything has a cost that we pick up. Very simple. Hit the suspend button, and that's it. Now, they do come back with the legitimate loan that has the potential to close. Uh, and again, remember that intuition, the leadership intuition, because um, as somebody said, one of the things they worry about is when somebody brings a loan that they're self-employed, man, if they're self-employed, you'd better be on your toes because, you know, the chances are pretty low. Uh, and the same thing, somebody joins, they, you know, they don't respond, they're not on the webinars, they're not, you know, responding to emails. And, uh, it takes me about half a second to know what to do with those people. But Rhett and uh, corporate, you know, like, well, maybe they like, well, maybe what? I don't get it. And so, like I said, so don't be that person. Make sure you leverage your license, monetize your license, and do what you know you can do. I have questions, comments, concerns from anybody. My phone number is 562-237-3683. Correct. So just go ahead and text me if you want to do a private webinar this week on the uh, solar stuff. Um, I mean, like I said, the, Rhett called me yesterday to all excited, letting me know that, hey, man, just wanted to let you know we're going all in. Because he's like, we do believe that solar is too big of a part of the real estate industry. Uh, it's just it's just too big to be left out. And so if anybody here wants to be part of that, uh, you can go ahead and text me and I will reach out to you as well. Questions, comments, concerns. Last one, last chance. Any? Uh, Javier, just had a quick question for the oh. Ninja Leads. What, what's, what's the link? What's the best link for that? The one that I gave you guys, the form that I sent you in the chat. That's the only link. Got it. Thank you. All right. All right. And like I said, uh, the, the, it's, the form is deactivated in 50 minutes, 5-0. So if you are watching this recording uh, on YouTube, please don't call or text me or message me or anything like that. It, it's just, you know, kind of like life, like business. You got to make things happen when they need to happen. Hey, uh, Javier. Uh, Javier, right, said, when will the credentials come through? I'm sorry? When will the credentials come through? Right? About after 12. Once the form gets okay. deactivated, all the emails go out. And okay. remember, the username is going to be your email address, lowercase, all lowercase. And the password is going to be what? Success yes. in 2022. All over. Okay. Thank you. There was somebody else, please, before we wrap it up. Uh, he answered my question. Okay, cool. Anybody else? All right. If no one has anything else, I just want to say thank you for all you do. Wish you a very happy holiday season, Christmas, whatever it is you might celebrate. Say Merry Christmas. Really. If you don't celebrate anything at all, just thank you for being part of our lives. My wife and I really are grateful for having you as yes, part of our life. Yeah. And I uh, can't wait to see you get from where you are to where you deserve to be. So thank you so much, everybody. And above all, please stay safe, stay healthy. Uh, Omicron's no joke. Uh, I think you're going to start to see more events being postponed, canceled. Uh, as a matter of fact, somebody called me yesterday and said, hey, man, you were just talking about the schools and New York just announced they're closing, you know, their schools again. They're closing the universities, are closed again. Uh, it's, everything's remote. And I go, it's usually Europe. East Coast, and then, of course, West Coast. Uh, they actually postponed a few games already, I believe, from the NFL, uh, the Rams game. I think already got postponed. Uh, yeah. Hollywood postponed some of the productions here locally already as well. And, you know, again, th this is not the time to be the – don't be the one that uses this as an excuse as to why you're not making money. Uh, why you're not making money is usually because we're not doing the work that needs to be done regardless of, the uh, you know, any kind of environment, whether it's politics or medicine or whatever – uh, people are getting paid. Make sure you're one of them as well. Thank you so much, everybody. Happy holidays. Have a great rest of the year. Until then. Happy Happy holidays. Happy, happy holidays. Thank you, Javier. Thank you, Javier. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry happy Christmas. New Year and happy birthday.
Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my time to have a meeting. I'll be older, man. I'll be super old, a senior citizen. But happy year. <laughs> sure. Happy year. This is Keith. Hey, my son's birthday is the second. Oh, wow. Capricorn. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I like him. I like him. Already. All right, guys. Thank you.